My name is Priyatam, and uh, I do a bunch of things, mostly APIs, backend, as well as user interfaces. I have my own tiny studio, and I do all Clojure and Clojure Script. Good luck with that. And uh, today I'm going to share some of my uh, learnings, uh, mostly Clojure Script, as well as uh, what I've learned from print design um, the last year and a half. Sort of my journey was of both was together, uh, so it's an interesting journey. So why grids? Um, before I ask that question, how many of you are a professional, is a professional designer over here? Do you get paid for writing CSS? Okay, so please give me feedback. Uh, I don't get paid for writing CSS, but that's something I've taken upon. So my learning was basically uh, coming from print design, as in speaking to indie publishers and small press, or what why there's different than web design. And uh, grids was an architectural pattern that they had. And I kind of went into a rabbit hole for about six months, went into a couple of conferences, spoke to typographers, spoke to graphic designers. And I saw that the stuff that they build is just way better, way better. And I asked myself, why can't I do this in CSS? Why can't I do this in SAS? In fact, they are. Some of the best designers build these things in SAS and CSS, in fact, they do it hand code in CSS. And I wanted to ask myself if McCarthy was the answer or the beginning of understanding Lisp, reading his papers. Who is that person in grids, uh, responsive design and typography? Turns out is this gentleman. Um, I have some work of his at the end. And he has a seminal work. It's a book out called Grid Systems. It's amazing, and uh, I would recommend it. It's but I'm not a web designer. I, I hear you guys say that, right? Um, it's not that bad. It's, it's, it's OK. Um, do you know CSS? Hey, <laughs> I know CSS. But we have many choices when you're doing responsive design and grids. Uh, more than 50 libraries. In fact, I just put together a little repo on, on my um, GitHub. Um, I just was exhausted. And uh, so I asked, I saw Chris Kyler and other folks speak about in their blogs, and they just don't care about grids, they just hand code it. I said, okay, fine, we'll hand code it too. So question, do you understand this language? This is more from a print design, someone who's not into CSS, like probably a creative director in InDesign telling this is what they want, and guess what this guy would say? Do you recognize this? In fact, I do have an answer for that. It's, uh, it's a single function. It took me three months to understand how the hell I could do this, but when I figured it out, it just made sense. In Clojure Script, this is based on Chris Schuyler's blog. I took his blog, played around with it, uh, his example. I said, what would it be in Clojure Script if I were to write a simplest possible grid? It's a single function. This will give you basic six column grids. Can we make it better? I asked myself. Obviously, we whispers want to make things better. We want to keep improving. So I went ahead and created a few functions. Uh, I copied shamelessly a bunch of libraries. I like gridism, which is pure CSS library. It's 600 lines. It took me four functions, I think six functions. And this is how the spec, the API looks like for me when I wrote my functions. I just create a grid with a list and I spec it out. I just stopped coding and then I said I want to create a grid on my own. And uh, the next one is uh, typography and I said what is the best way to do typography? Um, viewport based typography. If, if, you're, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically taking the measurements of, of your screen, uh, 500 pixel by 400, and actually runtime figuring out the length. It's just a single function document slash you know, client width, and then actually adjusting the size of the type, font size. It's better than, pix better than pixels, better than percentages. Uh, this stuff is not used by many CSS libraries because the math calculation is poor, but it's up and coming. It's now in CSS, IE9 and above. So I said, how can we do this in Clojure Script because math is inbuilt? Again, a single function. So I was really convinced that I need to pay attention, and I picked up Garden, and I want to show you a few demos. 
So this is just an HTML page. You might recognize if you use Bootstrap, we always start with a few things, and then we figure out how do you put two columns and things. And right now, it's not responsive. It's just single column, right? So we'll see now. This is an example of Garden. Uh, I use Ohm just for demonstration. You don't have to understand Ohm. All it's doing right now is um, it's mounting this basic widget. Absolutely basic component. This is just HTML syntax called H1. And uh, let's mount the component. OK, it's working. And I'm using FigWheel behind the scene. That is auto compiling Clojure script and Garden. So I can see Hello Garden. It is working. But I haven't inserted my styles. Now in CSS, if you, most of us are used to inserting styles on the head, correct? It's not dynamic. We can't insert on demand on through the browser or by, by um, imports. Clojure script, everything is a function. So I just insert it into the DOM. What just happened was there was a style sheet called styles. Uh, this is just a function I wrote. And my styles is simply this guy. CSS, take a list, create minimal grid. Remember the one I showed before? It was a single function. Let's just say that creates um, classes for the grid. And to, that's pretty much it. So I, all I'm saying is create a minimal grid, give this class pixel, uh, this is my gutter. So I create this, and this creates a CSS. So this not, may not make sense, didn't make sense to me. So I wanted to see in here what it, what it meant. So that's what it is. So this function here, insert styles, inserted the style sheet, returned by the value in this function, whatever this return. That inserted into the head, and this you can see this in Chrome. Same namespace. Does that make sense? Instead of taking a string, putting it into the head, I'm actually using functions in the JavaScript environment, in the Clojure script environment, and now we're on demand when I need it. In my case, I'm mounting the component, saying, hey, insert the style sheet according, you know, corresponding to the component. And I did it, and here it is. I can test it. This is the CSS. And this is uh, straightforward. So this is a basic example. Um, I want to show you something slightly more complex, since scripts can get complex. Uh, see. Usual, you would expect errors. Okay, here you go. So, before that, again, I'm unmounting it. There's nothing over here. And uh, when I mount my widget, So this is an example of a grid that we're used to in Bootstrap, right? Um, it's possible to create this in, a, again, like I said, four or five functions. It wasn't that hard. So as, you, as I said earlier, I started reading about grids, went into typography, and then looked at how hard is it to do grids. And it really turned out to be simple for the basic part. 80% of it was basic. And as you can see, this is responsive, mobile first. It works. So the question really goes uh, in my head is that, can we do this better? Uh, obviously, I was interested in coming up with my own toolkit. Um, so I'll show you what that means. Um, so I, I had a look at the source code. Uh, most of you are familiar with this, probably, a little bit, Bootstrap. Uh, it does grids based on gutters, mostly, based on margin. And it takes uh, column padding. So the hierarchy is basically container, <coughs> row, and column. Uh, by, by some smart math of having the, the nested, con nested columns within the same uh, margin, uh, they make, make sure that as long as you stick to the container, row, column hierarchy in your markup, things are fine. The problem with this is that you have to stick to container, row, column. Have you, if you've seen markup, it's verbose, right? 
And that's the problem uh, with Bootstrap, even though it is a really good boot, uh, grid implementation. And there are other folks, especially designers, who are not happy, and obviously they want other solutions. They've created things like Suzy, uh, which I think is a, uh, fantastic if you're a designer and SaaS, you have a SaaS-based workflow. But I found it hard to read the source code. Um, it has things a little magical, uh, context-based, extension is hard. So I, I, I said, you know, I want to learn like I learned Clojure. I want to start from the basics. And uh, print design had amazing things to, to share. Things like baseline grid. How do you set uh, your page um, with the context? How do you have lines? How do you set the line height? There are a lot of these things um, that I didn't know before a couple of years ago. And everything was there 50 years ago, 100 years ago. It was all in print design and uh, everywhere. And if you think about media queries, um, the idea also came from print design, which is really saying that take, an, take a big paper, A1 paper, which you might have known, fold it into half, and fold it into half, and keep folding it into half. And there you have your media queries, for example. You can make a 16-column grid, down it to eight columns, down into four columns, and now you have 240 to 2560. Does that make sense? So it's, these are very simple concepts. Um, and designers have implemented this, and I want to show you what that means. This is uh, exactly based on the last slide. You can see the columns. Right? Design is invisible um, until we actually see it. Eight column grid. And then if we, well, in this case, uh, let's see. It falls into four columns. right? It's fantastic, and the way it's implemented is straightforward. You just split your media queries based on the, uh, by halving it, based on the breakpoints. So I started asking myself, these are concepts, there's basic concepts as building blocks. How do we start codifying these uh, in a library from scratch without having a big framework uh, allowing, you know, letting us do that? And uh, again, I started we just lost that. <laughs> so I started in that route. And uh, as, us as usual, things are not easy. The 80% the of things are easier, but the rest of, not, rest of the things are not easier. So then I started um, looking into the concepts again and uh, getting inspired by other uh, posters like these. And they looked so simple and nice. And uh, there were a lot of questions I had in mind uh, that designers also uh, pointed out that if you want to really create a grid system with typography uh, based on how you want it, uh, you must really understand a lot more than uh, columns and rows. Uh, things like, without columns, can you create, like, can you create gutters by space between them or not? Um, I don't want to go into this because I want to focus this talk more on garden, um, and I think most of you are. So let me just step right into garden. Uh, because I think if we see the, how we can express these things, uh, a lot of these concepts would perhaps make sense. At least to me, that was the case. So garden, uh, things were expressed, everything as data structures. Uh, how many of you use Hiccup here? Great. If you like Hiccup, you like garden. Uh, just think CSS is expressed in data structures that you can now namespace them, right? Vectors are just selectors. If you have a um, grid with before and after, you just have, you just declare them as a selector. Maps are declarations, declarations are map. So your CSS rule sets become just a, a vector of vectors. Um, mixins are just a def, dry mixins. You just return the map, right? There is no concept, unlike in SAS, you have to have mixins. There are mixins with parameters. There are functions. It's they're, they're, you're like recreating language features in SAS and less. Right? And over here, you're not really recreating it. Um, so media queries are existing. But the most, the most important feature I like was abstractions, because um, 
If you use Ring, uh, things like Storm, um, MapReduce, these are all abstractions that make our life easier. CSS doesn't really have abstractions beyond what SAS provides, uh, you know, mixins. Mix so I started asking myself, remember the question I had earlier? What does a Lambda programmer answer? I, I have a higher order function, he says. Uh, I actually ended up coming up with that, and it sounds silly, but uh, I'll show you how that looks like. This is the DSL, and we will get to the demo in a bit. Um, there's a demo I want to show you where entire page is built with this concept. Can anyone read this and have a guess of what this, look, what this might mean? Just take a pick. There's no right or wrong, wrong answer. It's a layout. Say that again. It's a layout. Um, what, what do you think it is doing? It yeah, it's taking a header. It's scaling its type. I, I hope the, the language is simple. Make serifs, make sense, brand fonts, grid create columns three. So, I, so this was my goal when I started off. It took me a while to get there, and I'm still struggling how to get it right. And the way I had to create this was actually creating, by separating selectors, selectors and de declarations. What that means is you have like H1s, you've got like body copies, like you always have these nested selectors. And we always put the selectors and declarations together. What if we separate them? What if we have what they do as something else? In my case, it was, um, it was basically adding media queries and what they are or something else, and I compose them. What it, what it really means is M selectors, N declarations, we don't have to write that many combinations. If you separate them, you can write a higher order function that composes them. It's just like ring middleware. It was a crazy idea. It actually worked. So in my case, I write a make, make serifs, which is, a, which is returning a function, and it's doing a bunch of things. Scale type is also doing the same thing. It's like middleware. And I can now create DSLs like this. The goal is that. An engineer would be doing this, and hopefully I will get this to a designer. At least they can see and read this. So let me jump straight into the demo, because I think that makes more sense if we see in the demo. All right, we unmount. Have you used uh, Ohm, anyone? Just basics, yeah. Uh, I'm not, I, I won't cover why Ohm, because this is oh, using Ohm just for one single feature that is sharing state in app state. And if you think of having a global atom to, share, to put your uh, state, that's good enough for now. Because there, there's so many other things Ohm does, we'll just look at basics. So in this example, um, I want to show you how, uh, how you would start designing, let's say, you want to design a magazine, and uh, hopefully it will look something like this, but it's basic, right? And my goal is that um, I start with the concept, and uh, I start putting the markup, and then I want to st start styling things. Um, so in this case, I'll say I want to put a logo and see how it looks. There's a logo right there. That looks good. And, um, and here I want to start putting more things. Um, that's an image. Uh, any guesses who the image is? Who is that? Uh, it's coming there. It's coming there. The problem with this is if you, I haven't shown the responsive side of things. It's not responsive. <laughs> yes, it's not responsive. Uh, and uh, second thing is uh, I haven't enabled the styles. So let me enable the styles. OK, I put the grid on now. The grid that I used before, now it is in a grid. There you go. <laughs> so as you can see, all the stuff I said before might have not made sense. It didn't make sense to me, too. And a lot of things with Clojure are like that with me. Initially, it doesn't make sense. And I start playing around. I start just imagining things. 
and then it started making sense because you know a lot of things I explore because with an, I have an idea and then I kind of want to bring put a language together like a DSL then once I have it I start you know using that so in this case that was my journey so I want to create a journal that look really nice with nice typography and settings but I didn't want to play in the CSS land I want to play at a higher level uh, this is just for me because if I'm successful in this I can probably share with others right so in this case as you can see I added the grid styles then I added the typography base and hopefully it looks a little better hey it looks slightly better right as you can see um, this is kind of 10% maybe close to InDesign which is where I'm actually competing is because I want to reach at that level CSS is verbose, you constantly keep coding, constantly keep changing. You change something over there, this thing breaks. Change something here, this thing breaks, correct? You agree with me? So if I can now control at the component level, at the field level, and I add, remove, add, remove, mount, unmount, both components, not just data, which is what React has you know, pushed forward, and I think it's an exam a fantastic example, but also the content itself. You know, Websites are built with content, not really data. I mean, we are putting data there now. But text is content, text is data, right? Uh, a lot of editorial magazines, they view text as a creative part of work. I am a writer, so I, I think text is very important. Uh, illustrations are important. These are part of what a magazine or a journal or any good website have, right? So why don't we start treating them as data? Not just putting them in strings and making, calling a designer at the end of your workflow, hey, can you just style it up? It doesn't work that way, right? So in this way, I was able, at least in my early prototypes, I'm now able to add things declaratively and things won't break as long as I am adding things incrementally. Uh, Figwheel lets me do this. If you haven't heard of Figwheel, I totally recommend it. I think Bruce is giving a talk later on. Uh, it's totally awesome. Uh, so let's go on one step further. And these are fairly, these are like ohm concepts, you're just swapping atoms, but what we're doing here um, is taking the content here in this uh, big atom, and I'm swapping the content, and these content are styled as well. So what I'm essentially doing with a simple library that I'm working on is I've created a big global map of styles, like based uh, declarations of font settings and I've created a style sheets at one place so the goal is that I have my base style sheets the style sheets fundamentally are kind of in place but they have to keep changing with configurations so my goal is really write that first keep changing the config and then keep repeating it until I like my typography I like my grids I mean I change my grid structure as well tweak it change the content, isn't that what we want in a website? I think at a higher level that's what I found is that it's, this kind of workflow didn't exist and uh, this is I think the beginning, at least to me. So you can see here now, um, so let's say this is our example and I don't like this content and I am trying to change this. Um, Someone else came and then your, your developer and your creative director or copy editor or the CMS guy came and said, hey, we have new content, we have to swap it. Can you check how it is? How easy it is for you to do it? Does anyone have a quick fix? You have a working site. It shows a bunch of things, right, for lack of a better word. And someone came with a new piece of content. They say, can you show me how this looks? No matter what CMS you use, how hard is it or how easy it is? Tell me your easiest one and tell me your hardest one. That's right. That's, uh, that's what happens most times. In this case, thanks to Ohm, and this is a part I will cover in my, I'll switch back to slides at the end, that if you start integrating this kind of workflow with something like React-based components, it could be Reagent, it could be Ohm, um, I think it depends on your choice. What you're doing really is you're, you're now combining styles, content, as well as a frame or a library like, like you know, React-based library, you're kind of merging them together. There is no distinction. To me, at least, when I'm playing the designer hat, I don't want to play that distinction because I'm constantly battling with making the perfect API and making the perfect design. I think that that's a dream that I don't want to fulfill. Uh, I want to integrate both, right? 
So in this case, I can just say swap. And for those of you um, who missed it, so this is a big state, right? So it's just an atom, just a map, literally a map. Content title, I'm literally declaring what my structure looks like. And I copied another one for a demo, new state, right? And I'm saying that swap that atom into this. Did it happen? Oh, not that one. Reset. Now let's hold for a minute here. So this is a fictional magazine, obviously. I have changed my template with the styles, with a different content. And my goal again, uh, you might be thinking, how is this related to grids? My goal is actually having a grid and typography test those things for my content, right? Everything else is secondary if, I, if I'm playing that role, right? So in this case, I'm able to now view different things. Hey, we have a new guy too. And I'm testing now all these three things in a much more declarative way. I don't know about you, but I get excited about these things. I get really excited. And I don't think it, these things would have happened if, you know, if not for Ohm and obviously taking that paradigm to the next level, similar paradigms to things like garden, style sheets. I don't think it would be possible, right? And I think there, there are some exciting things that can happen uh, if we take this one step further. For example, in this page, uh, you might be wondering, where am I getting the style sheets, right? The style sheets are right here. I'll just clean this. Storyboard, and this is namespace. The way Clojure Script does is it takes the namespace, converts into objects, obviously. And uh, here is my app state. I can see my app state, right? And uh, let's see, where is my styles? So you see, everything is a function here. So is in here, I do a little crooked thing, but I think it's working for me at least. I'm literally inserting the styles for the component on I will mount. And for those who are new to React, it's just a lifecycle protocol that says if you're mounting a component, do some things. Um, in the Ohm land, it's like, you know, start a channel, things like that. Um, people do other things like, you know, Jake, you know, using other necessary things here. So in my case, I say, hey, I, styles are my resources. I'm mounting the styles. So if you want to see how the styles are, I can actually see what the styles are um, generated right here. It's, let's see how that looks. Mesh. <coughs> Down. Yeah. So I'm actually insert styles and then let's examples. Storyboard. The same this may seem verbose, but this didn't exist of six months, eight months ago because closure script was still coming up. And let's see, that's verbose. That's an object. In my case, uh, where did I go? What did I do wrong? Page styles, okay. All right, I'm gonna give up this one because lack of time. But you get the point. Um, that function is actually creating <coughs> It's, it's a function uh, which has all the styles for that component, and I'm inserting that on DOM. What this means is it is now possible to have um, different, comp if you can spread uh, your page into sections and components in the React world, each component can bring its own style, and it can mount them as resources. This is not possible in JavaScript land until, four, I think, five months ago with Webpack, which is a whole different story. Have you heard of Webpack? Yeah, uh, Webpack does some crazy stuff. It brings in resources, and then you can bundle them in a single JavaScript file. But we don't have to resort to that level in uh, Clojure Script because we have a namespace, right? We have a namespace, we have a function, and if we can organize your components and have their own style sheets, uh, you can tag them along. And if you can control with something like a protocol here, uh, then they could be managed. 
this was not possible in CSS. You just put in strings, and I, I just really like this uh, concept. And they, obviously, you can do other things. Um, like, for example, uh, I just don't like this. I want to pre preview my last state, and boom, I'm up to my undo last state. And this is obviously the own, own feature. You can now switch states uh, with the exact same content before. And imagine now you're previewing before going to staging. These are all serious issues, production issues that we're kind of solving and using several tools, but I haven't found anything that uh, I, I was convinced. So with this now, with Mesh, with, with Garden, with something like Ohm or Reagent, I can have a workflow that essentially is letting me preview different content and different styles together uh, for a design-heavy website. And that's pretty much is my goal with um, um, for you know expressing style sheets, especially when you're looking at grids, typography, uh, which really comes down to showing content, right? So uh, we've covered a little bit of Ohm. Uh, as I said, it can store styles in App State. I can store content in App State. This component can manage them. Uh, obviously, like most things, Garden. Biggest issue would be using Clojure Script itself. If it's a big hurdle, I know that. Um, I'm just taking it upon me, and I just want to make sure that I can build something and probably share something with you folks um, soon. I have put a library up with some of the concepts I shared. Uh, it's on GitHub. Um, it's super early. There's way more things that I haven't covered about grid, asymmetrical grids, things like calculating pixel values based on calc and other things. Um, it's actually not impossible. It just takes time. And I think we can get there. Um, I've ported about three SAS libraries. Took me a few weeks. And I've never written a library, SAS library before. So it just was easier for me because garden things are much easier. Units are easier. Math is easier. Um, everything is easier in garden because you don't have to deal with converting things. Um, and I just want to cover one slide before I open for questions, is um, that there are features that are not in CSS. Um, and as I believe most of us are here because we want to try out new things, right? And if there are not many features, let's not stick to what's out there, but let's perhaps try to explore what Garden provides and Clojure Script provides. And to me, Composability is very important. Uh, something I learned and started appreciating in uh, backend, ring like middleware. So if I start using the same concepts of composing styles uh, that are not tied to my selectors, I think we're, we can possibly open up some sort of plugin system similar to post CSS and other things. Uh, I think it will be very, uh, it'll be awesome. Rather than downloading an entire framework, you can download literally functions or like small libraries to do one thing and one thing only. This stuff is just exciting. It is happening in post CSS and NPM. Uh, I think we can do that too. And also REPL driven design is great. And uh, that's my library out. It's, it's super early. It's just up there because I want people to get excited. Whoever is into both sides like me, uh, I just want them to try it out. Uh, I think FB shouldn't stick with code. We should go FB all the way. And uh, that was my selector's concept. So I do want to end with this, saying that uh, last year I spoke at Clojure West San Francisco. It was my first time I was speaking on Clojure Script. My goal was to actually design pages uh, and compose pages. That was kind of my weird goal. And I think I'm like two steps forward than that. Uh, it took me a year to get there. Uh, I wasn't able to do everything in Clojure Script. I had to do it in five languages. Today, I'm able to do most, pretty much everything in Clojure Script on the front end uh, with design. And there's a long way to go. And, and I want to share this story because it's really hard to do anything in Clojure Script until you put your head down. And I was able to do it. Uh, I didn't have any background in Lisp or grid designs for that matter. And that's where I want to get. And that's the gentleman who I think revolutionize how grids is. Grids is not columns and rows. It's actually geometry. I want to thank Joel. Uh, I think he's done a fantastic job. And that's it. Open for questions.
it's sort of a formalization of um, what Facebook has been doing. They've privately gotten rid of CSS, and they've just been using um, using React to push styles down through the through the virtual boundary. Um, and it, it seems like there's some similar kind of results with the triggering of the logo. I haven't heard of that. No, I do know that the React team is trying to express everything in JavaScript, but it's not. If it's not data structures, then yeah, things. So they're actually yeah. using. Um, they are just using like a, a JavaScript object. Okay. Styles I'm not familiar with it though. Yeah. yeah. We'll it's check it out. Philosophy, but I think some different pieces of approach. So. We'll check it. You can debug style sheets in Chrome. I actually should have shown it. It's a function. And in Chrome, uh, well, let's not waste time, but I'm happy to show it offline. It's a function, so all the sources mounted in Chrome, and there's source map support in ClojureScript, all the latest ClojureScript. So put a debugger in Chrome. I am debugging style sheets in Chrome. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but. Yeah. Are you debugging like the final like, selector? It's, so I debug, I debug the Function depending on the function, if it's returning uh, my entire, if it's returning selectors and declaration, declarations, the whole rule set, then I can debug that, and I can in the REPL just say CSS because CSS is garden's function of convert into string. So that's how I debug. So I go into that and say convert into string. But if it's debugging a mixin, which is just a bunch of declarations, then yeah, you have to kind of go up the chain and see the place where it's actually resolving into a, a style sheet. Uh, I mean, it's a pain, but the tooling is really bad. I think that's the problem with, with ClojureScript for you know, non-ClojureScript folks is that people who are into this, uh, there are a lot of tools, but I think folks in Rubyland, designers especially, have, are, have a far more stable system. I think we, 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 we have a lot of things to do over there. Yeah. But we can get there. Yeah. We have no questions, then uh, that's it. Thank you. Ha